safe. Come on. Come on. Please. Yeah. It's a good for you to be in there. For a soul. Save the hope. 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 One big happy family. I treat all my male workers as if they're my own children. They get what they want. Would you like to ask me anything? What are their working conditions like? Oh, very good. What do they get to eat? They get a lovely bowl of soup. Uh, uh, where do they sleep? Do they get any free time? No questions. <laughs> Don't take my word for it. Elizabeth, come up here. Dad told me. Ask her anything. Do you get to be Um, yeah. Do you need your family? Mm, not much. I really like it here. How many hours do you work? Um, six. Ignore her, ladies and gents. She is one of the most badly behaved employees here. Always getting in trouble. Always telling lies. I really can't take it here anymore. Don't let her escape. Catch her. Don't! Let go! John Violet wouldn't like this. Please! <laughs> let this be a lesson to you all. Understood? As a consequence of her punishment, she will have a head shave. Excuse me, what's going on here? This young apprentice is trying to run away. We don't treat her like this. She's just a girl. But, but, sir, uh, she ran away. Well, that's unacceptable behaviour and I will not tolerate it in, in my mill. You're fired! But sir, I said leave! Now! Yeah. Woo! You there, take the young girl at her rest. Alright, back to work everybody! We have to make a bit of money around here. Tip top! Tip top! That was him, my great-great-grandfather, John Rylands, doing what he does best, helping people. There is absolutely nothing to do in Stratford. Every day I work as a seamstress's apprentice, measuring, cutting, stitching, fitting. Every night I lay in bed longing for something, anything to do, but there's nothing. I don't talk to people anymore, or at least not as often as I used to. All of my friends went to work at the mills, but mother said it was far too dangerous, so I became a seamstress instead. But it's just so boring. The only entertainment I get is listening to the customers as I measure them for their gowns. So we have such interesting lives. We speak of love, heartbreak, friendship, and arguments. There was one conversation that I took particular interest in. 
These two women spoke of a man who was trying to build something, a place where people can come together, whether it be to talk or to read. They even said there might be a youth club for people like me who just want something to do. I don't think I'll ever be able to express my gratitude towards this man for using his hard-earned money to build something for the community. Rich people like him usually look down on people like me. But I can tell he's different. What was his name again? It was something like John. That was it. John Rivens. Everyone on this side, follow me. If everyone else would like to come with me. Sometimes the best way to learn about someone's life is to start at the very end. What happened to the people they cared about after they were gone? Meet Emma Kerr, the last love of John Ryland's life, and the widow he will one day leave behind. Good afternoon, ladies and gentlemen. I am Emma Kerr Ryland, and I have gathered you here today as I seek for a lady in waiting. Someone who can be there for me in times of need because my husband John is away on business so much. There has been no shortage of applications for this role and I have handpicked the best three candidates to stand before me today. But only the best, only the worthiest will do. Now, my first candidate, Miss Mabel Brentwood. Hi. My second candidate, Miss Rosemary Ashworth. My third and final candidate, Miss Fanny Hookett. Now, I'm going to ask you all five questions and I want your honest answers as my lady in waiting should be trustworthy and they should keep secrets. And I don't just want a lady in waiting, I want a friend, a companion. Is that clear? Okay, question number one. What's your current job? Well, I work at the post office. I'm in charge of stamps and envelopes and staples That's and stuff. I'm a landscape gardener. A what? A landscape gardener. And you? I've been an architect for the past four years and three months. Question number two. What are your hobbies? Oh, well, I love knitting, don't you? I just think it's stunning. Awesome. Can you? Um, I'm going to like to sew. To what? To sew. To what? S to sew. Okay, thank you. As I'm an architect, I really like to draw. And why do you think you're worthy of being my lady in waiting? So I can be around you all the time. Is it nice to be on top for every hour of every day, of every week, of every Shh. month? Can you? I think I could really help. What? I think I could very really help. So I need to help you speak up. And you? I was really intrigued by the family's past, especially the John Wilde's part. And when I was lady in waiting for John's previous wife, I was nothing but reliable. So, what do you think your best quality is? I think I'm loquacious, garrulous, and voluble. <laughs> what? It means I like to talk. <laughs> and you? Um, well... And you? I have many good qualities, but if I had to pick one, it would be that I'm very loyal. Now, I want to see how much you all know about me. Where am I from? Well, where is the person really from? You know that evolution theory, from apes or fish or... <laughs> and you? And you Sweden? <laughs> it does that way. Originally, but now you're proud to Yes, I am. And with that, my decision is clear. My new lady in waiting is. Oh, thank you so Fanny much. Fanny Hookett! Thank you. But... <laughs> now, will you give us a bit of privacy while we sort everything out?
I worked half my money. I'm not giving away to someone like you. on his feet and let him be treated with respect. Yes, let's build him a workhouse. No, 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 not a workhouse. He needs to be treated well and respectfully. Yes, you're right. This child deserves to be happy. I, I don't know how to thank you enough. I've been trying for years to get a job and a home, but I guess you can't get one without the other. Thank you so much, you kind, kind man. It's my pleasure, Silly. Oh my god, these poor people can't even read. I know, it's awful. We have to do something. Hmm. I wish there was somewhere that where I can learn to read. Somewhere that's free, with books and chairs that anyone can sit in. If only such a place existed. <gasps> I know, we could build a... You are both so very kind. We can build it in the public hall so everyone could use it. What a brilliant idea, dear. Thank you. This could be latching. I wish you all the best. Thank Goodbye. You. John Ryland's had such a big impact on so many people's lives. Listen, I hear voices. Voices from the past. I'm just a sort of respectful hard working, caring, just dedicated. I'm so like so when I got crushed over she in a concert and I'm actually going to be up there and I'm She died by being crushed by the windmill only 11 years old. She died because the world didn't work in her past hours. After 
John mad, Emma Kettle was devastated. What will she do with his money? What will she do with his business now he's gone? That's a lot of pressure, isn't it? Excuse me, Mrs. Frylands. You do understand from the will reading that John has left all his money and assets up to you. What use is money when you don't have your husband with you? Well, maybe you could follow in his footsteps and help the children in need. Thanks for your time. Are you okay? I asked my husband too a few years ago. Of course I'm not okay! He's gone! What do I do now? Well, I know it is hard to believe, but it does get better. He did so much for so many people. He helped so many children, donated money. How, how do I show how much he meant to me? How do I show how much he meant to everyone? Why not create something in his memory? I mean, a park bench, a dedicated garden, a statue? He yes. likes books. Well, why not build him a library? I wouldn't know how. Well, as an architect and your lady in waiting, I could help you. You could? Of course I could. Come with me, we'll stop finding it. And that's how the big building in town got built. You know the big building in Deansgate that looks like Hogwarts? Yeah, that one. She must have really loved him. I'd like a building after me when I'm gone. Wouldn't you want them? Yeah. Now follow me this way. This door, is it? Yeah, it's yeah. Okay. John Rhymes when he was at school. Very talented young man. Never gave up. Top of his class. Worked hard. He, and he stood out from his brothers and their classmates. But he got teased and bullied terribly for working so hard. It was jealousy really. Nothing more. I knew he'd go for. And look at him now. I'm proud of that young man. Proud to say I helped him find his future in my own small way. John Rowlings was my brother. We went in the business in the early days, but it didn't last long. We weren't good at working together, so I left him and get on so we can get on with it. Seems like a rather forced decision now. I wonder if I should ask him to join again, but perhaps he wouldn't want me. But I'm still proud of him. I suppose, although I wish things had turned out differently. I can't help to wonder sometimes whether our father loved him more than he loved me. I lived in Stratford all my life and never once have I met a man who did more for us than that John Ryland. He was a fellow, you know. He really cared, really wanted to make people's lives get better. He had millions, they reckon. But he didn't want to spend it all on himself, not like some people I could mention. He built a lot of things for us. He built swing baths, a library, a church, oh yes, and a home for people like me, people who are getting on a bit. I've lived here for the last couple of years and I've never felt more comfortable. I'd shake that man's hand if I could. Hi, I'm John Rylands, 1854. Remember that terrible fire? The big warehouse in Manchester. That was his warehouse, that. Such a blaze it was, never seen the like. We got called there as quick as we could. There was virtually nothing we could do. It all went up faster than we could put it out. Chief was furious, said we're a disgrace to our profession. Half us lost our jobs. That John Rylands, he heard about it. And he took us on at his factory. I am more grateful than I can say for what you did. John Rylands had such a big impact on so many people's lives, but I bet not everyone was as kind hearted as he was. But I thought you got rid of all the evidence. We're not supposed to have children under 30 working here. He was only 11. Crushed. Oh, what a horrible death, even for the useless searching. I will not lose my position over this. No, I will sort it out immediately. Make sure no children are seen out of the proper hours for a few weeks as well. 
Yes, and in a few weeks, this will all be forgotten about. Yes, you'd remember them anyway. When you've seen one, you see them all. You have done that. Oh, that's not one. Can't believe that everyone's treating their workers as well as my great great grandfather did. He was maybe the same age as me when he died. So lucky I don't have to work in a mill. Come on. Follow me into the church and we'll take a look at John Ryland's interesting love life. <laughs> John Lyons is this legend of a man, the multimillionaire who transferred Manchester and changed the lives of so many people. But when I first knew him, he was just John who lived down the road. John from the flash shop, John who could never sit still and never wanted to. We were barely 20 when we married, loved up young romantics, ready to take on the world. The superstar business swam with the Golden Family. But it takes time to become a legend. He worked every hour God sent and never made enough money to satisfy him. There was always more to do, new businesses to set up, new deals to make, and the golden family we both longed for didn't come easily either. Many of our children died as infants, and even those that lived were always ill, always such a worry. I can't pretend I enjoyed being the one left at home while John went off to make his fortune. He was a good man, there's no denying that. The precious time we spent with him was filled with love and laughter and generosity. I wish I had lived to see more of him and to see him become the legend he always dreamed he would be. We are gathered here today to join this man and woman in marriage. Do you, John Rylance, take this woman to be your wife? I do. Do you, Martha Cardin, take this man to be your husband? I do. By the power vested in me, I pronounce you husband and wife. Imagine being married to the John Rylands, the hero of the city, the boy from St Helens who picked himself up from nothing to become the emperor of the British industry. He took me all over Europe. We walked along the Spanish coast, burning our feet in the sand and breathing in the scent of strange flowers. And we scaled the glistening mountains of ice in Sweden, watching our breaths fog up in the freezing air. It was like a dream. We did have to wake up sometimes, though. There was a terrible fire in one of his biggest warehouses in Manchester. It destroyed so much of what he had. I'd never seen him more angry, more heartbroken, more close to despair. I told him not to give up hope. He'd survived so much, he could survive this too. And he did. It was over too soon, as all good things are. I grew unwell and needed a companion to nurse me. She was an unexpected little thing, half Cuban if you can believe it, but she did her job well and faithfully. Emma Ketta was her name. I sometimes saw a look pass between her and John. I hope she will look after him, now that I can't any longer. What a nice turnout! These must be all Enriquette's friends. Don't friends are going to other places, if you know what I mean. Oh, darling, you look simply magnificent! John is so lucky. 
third time lucky for him, eh? Oh, please don't joke, Fanny. You know this is a very special day. Please give me your blessing. I really love John. Right. Now I see he makes you happy, and I want you to be happy. I wish you all the joy in the world. Thank you. Crikey, should have nabbed him myself. <laughs> we are gathered here today to join this man and woman in marriage. Do you? John Rylands, take this woman to be your wife. Do I? I don't know. Right, I do. Yes. <laughs> do you, Enriqueta Augustina Tennant, take this man to be your husband? I do. By the power vested in me, I pronounce you husband and wife. I'm sure you've heard the stories about John and myself. The nursemaid who watched his wife die and then took his pl her place in his life and home. The scandalous 32 year old who married a 74 year old. The immigrant from Cuba who stole the heart of one of the richest men in Britain. Believe me, I know what they say about me and I know what they think of me. That it was all for the money, that I planned it before Martha's death. That I saw a chance for glory and I took it. Well, who am I to say it was any different? Would you believe me if I told you? I will say this though, I love John Rylands, more than I can possibly say. We had 12 wonderful years together, and it only felt like 12 days. Who'd have believed that the mighty John Rylands could ever die? We half convinced ourselves he would turn out to be immortal. A sad day told us the truth. He is as human as the rest of us. He had three wives, seven children too, but most of them died when they were even younger than me. Maybe it was living through his wives and children's deaths that made him such a generous person. Generous, kind, stunning good looks. Just like me. It's this generosity that built the hall. This is a place where anyone can come and take part. This is why we desperately need to save it. But none of this would have been possible without John's money. How did he get so rich? Follow me.
dead screams and cries of dying children, the animals were fleeing. There was too much smoke, I couldn't see. It burned. I've never felt so scared. The scorching red flames were everywhere. Burning embers filled the air. The smoke filled my lungs. The fog filled me disgust. I saw fire everywhere. There was fire everywhere. I've never felt so scared. Great for the behind the hall. Do you understand why we desperately need to save it and why it means so much to me, to my family and to the people of Stretford? The person we bought it from told us none of this. It was such a beautiful story. Yeah, this is such an important building. Of course we can save it. It belongs to the people. Hang on a second. It's important to know where we came from and to learn what the past has to tell us about the future. I was a very successful man and I wanted to use my success to help others and if you will do the same, if you will what use whatever you have been given to use to bring good to the other people, then you will be carrying on my legacy.
Yeah, I've been to the show with John, uh, the public call about John Ryland. Really good, really good songs, it sounded great. It's great. <laughs> I think. It's creative. It's brilliant performance, children were really confident. Building was ace. Lots to learn, lots of history that we weren't aware of. It's a great class. I liked it. You liked it? Yep. Yeah. Moving around. Yeah, it's brilliant. The kids were fantastic. The acting was amazing. The singing was good. The sets. Sound. Brilliant, fantastic show. Well done. It was a fantastic show. I cannot believe that all the uh, effort that went into that paid off. It was amazing. Everyone remembered the lines. It was so varied. We had to walk around the whole building. We got a real feel for the building as well as the history of John Ryland. Thoroughly enjoyed it. Yeah, it was great to see local children involved in the local history of understanding about the area where they live. Really, really talented children. Great, great for them, a great experience for them and really, really well done to them and the people that have organised it. We've had a really, really great afternoon. And as Mary Maris of Trafford and also Stretford Area Councillors, we're very, very proud today. Yeah, I really liked the use of space, the fact they used the whole building or as much of the building as they could in a way. It was quite interesting walking around and the way that they developed the characters and they sort of shared the characters out between them. So I thought that was a really good use of the uh, use of the actors as well. I was really impressed with the, uh, the standard of acting. I mean, uh, I knew they were good. Um, my own son is in it and some of his friends and I was really really impressed with how well they performed. Um, we've just been to see the show and we thought it was absolutely brilliant. I think the children worked really hard, it, uh, it all came together really well and uh, it, it's great use of the building. Um, my children were in it and I was proud of them both, I think they were fantastic. So. My favourite part was how interactive it was, moving around. My favourite part was putting out the fire. Yeah he got to be a character today so that was really good. I quite like the end bit, the uh, with, with the uh, medley of songs, with uh, John Ryland sort of like singing a few contemporary or seventies disco hits and that sort of thing. I thought that was that was a good use, you know, good use of um, you know mixing past and present and stuff. I thought that was that was really quite quite effective. The bit in the main hall was really good. I thought the way they did the the fire, and, and I think the whole the history of the, the Stretford. I think the way they got incorporated that into it. I thought for the, that was really good. For me, my favourite part was the ABBA, money, money, money. I thought that was an ingenious way of uh, tying in ABBA with, uh, with John Ryland. I thought the wedding scene was great as well, going through the wives that John Ryland's had, because I'm sure that that's not really been the part of history that's been focused on, so I thought that was fantastic. Yeah, I was the same, the, wedding, the weddings were great, and just really understanding the, the, the history of it as well it was brilliant.